so happy we alive. Welcome to Louisville Late Night. This is Patrick Moore, and we are thrilled this evening to have with us a guest of great renown, an artist, a composer, a director, a cultural merger, an artist extraordinaire, whom, thanks to the University of Louisville, Jazz Festival, and thanks to Crane House, thanks to Helen and Calvin Lang of the University of Louisville Medical School. We are so pleased to have with us Mr. John Chang. Uh, well, I've been blessed to to have these experiences that I, it's when I've had time to sort of reflect on it it seems just unbelievable um, over the past few years I've followed my own path um, I guess you might say to the sound of not not to the sound of a different drum but actually the sound of a different gong um, <laughs> but um, I've, I've worked with musicians from from China I've worked with a lot of African American and European American musicians from various kinds of w different walks of life, different beats of life, different religions. I've worked with Christians, uh, with Buddhists, and it's, I guess from, from, from pe people's perspective, they look at me, you know, John Jang, like, for example, the Chinese musicians, they look at me and they say, you look Chinese, but you don't act Chinese. <laughs> you know? And they, 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 they hear my music, it sounds Chinese, but it doesn't sound like like a composer from China, I know what they're, they're going to write. And I, I'll give you a story. One time I was in a restaurant in a, a, a small town or a small city similar to Louisville. And wherever you go all over the world, there's always going to be a Chinese restaurant. So I enter the restaurant, and uh, the, the Chinese waiters and waitresses, they're looking at me, maybe the way I dress, maybe the way I walk, maybe there's something, maybe a little bit not quite familiar to them but there is familiar I obviously look Chinese uh, but you know I'm not speaking it they don't hear anything then when I sit down at the, the table and I order my food then they say oh, okay he's an American born Chinese but what was very startling was I was holding the chopsticks with my left hand and that was like uh, it's not that say Chinese or Chinese American uh, you know they reject the use of the left hand but I'm left-handed and it's not um, well it's something that's not uh, I mean it's more of a right-handed culture I think for Chinese Americans here as well as in China of my generation so already you can say well here's somebody who does something different and then well I actually I'm not ambidextrous but I actually use both my hands in a similar way and so I, so in some ways in kind of the music it's kind of like a metaphor from my music is that I there is something about me that's very Chinese American but in some ways well what does that mean it's I mean does it mean that uh, and so it it means that I have a certain individual expression that all of us have you know but I think that we our individual expression is 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 based on who we are. I mean, what is what does it mean to be an American? Mm -hmm. and, and to me, it's like our individual expression, our individual experiences within the collective context. And so, uh -huh. it's we all of us have shared this kind of diverse experience. Um, and that's your metaphor: one stem, two blossom. Uh, two flowers on a stem. Two flowers on a stem. Sorry. And the two the two flowers is is one. Uh, your American heritage, if you will, and your Chinese heritage coming together as one. Yeah, it has multiple meanings, but that is one and I think that will resonate, you know, for a lot of uh, Americans, that is if you're 
Um, and, and it also means that, well, just because, like, for example, if you're Irish-American, yes, there's being in touch with being Irish, but but being in America, and well, I guess I should really refer to United States because uh, I haven't been to South America yet. But it's like um, you, you're interacting with different people. Like I'm interacting with you, uh -huh. and you're you know European American. I don't know really specific. Well, you said you're Catholic, and and so and and see, I studied the music of of uh, French impressionistic. Uh, Olivia Messiaen, uh -huh. who was a devout Catholic, and in his music there was a lot of uh, Christian symbolism. Uh -huh. And at me being a, a Christian, when I became a Christian, I, I, I actually uh, became closer to Olivia Messiaen's music, because I only understood sort of the technical aspects of his musical language, but when I understood the spiritual content of his music, then it, it, it brought me closer to his music. Uh -huh. And so I think that as uh, you know, as an American, we it's it's trying to understand the totality of different people, and it's actually very refreshing. I mean, because can you imagine if we went to a, a restaurant and every day you went to a McDonald's or or, or a Jack in the Box, and I, I feel that you know, I go to different places, I I smell and eat eat the foods of of you know the different mm -hmm. cultures, and I, I guess here in Louisville, I mean I I've. Uh, I haven't had a brown sandwich yet, right? Mm -hmm. uh, or, or the what's what's that pie that? Yeah, the, uh, yeah derby pie. And I haven't had the, the derby hot, pie the yet. Brown. I've had Kentucky uh, sliced ham, and I, I don't know if this seems kind of uh, stereotypical. I don't mean to be sort of disrespectful to Louisville oh, culture, well. but but there, I've also been to like the Chinese restaurants and the Thai, and uh -huh. and so there's diversity within Louisville. Right. Well, let's um, not forget Kentucky bourbon too. Kute oh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I I could. Uh, um, I, I, I think on the next um, next time, if I have a, a, a period where I, I can have more time to to uh, experience that, and, and I, like I recall when I was a, a child, I was uh, into baseball, and I remember uh, all my baseball mitts and, and baseball bats, the Louisville Slugger. Uh, all right, all right. A, f a friend of mine's dad. Way where it changes tempo and. A lot of some of the African American musicians were like a little bit thrown off. Um, I remember Tootie Heath; he was like he was keeping time, and all of a sudden it's like the tempo just would rush, and then he's just like, "Okay, where are we?" And it's like, uh, and um, you, it's almost like a roller coaster. You just kind of have to breathe with uh, and, and follow the singer, and then the jingle, which is the lead instrument, the higher pitch tuning instrument, follows that, and it takes it takes some time. I think collaboration. Uh, and, and I was fortunate that I started my collaboration with them in 94. But then I think that the Chinese musicians, they see that in this music, um, the music seems rhythmically rigid. That's one of the remarks that they've made. And, and, and so when we do like double time, it's like, it's double time. I mean, there's this, and, but you know, if you listen to some of Ellington's work though, there is a lot of that ex, ex, accelerando and retard, uh, specifically, um, uh, well, I can name one example, like Harlem, the extended suite in 1950. But, you know, I'm kind of getting a little bit overly technical about this. You know, what I want to do is stop here and open, um, open it up for, like, questions or comments. Any, any, it doesn't have, okay, it could be non-musical, it could be cold, it could be just personally anything uh, about this or...